What's up guys? It's Christine and Erin with Irene Iron Fitness. And in today's video, we're gonna test out the capacity of our gray, black, and fresh tanks. If you're wondering how long we can make it in our Airstream interstate, stick around. So we just got done spending two weeks in an RV park in Eastern Washington called the Little Diamond Resort, and they did not have full hookups for us. So that got us thinking about really how long do your tanks last? How much can you squeeze out of them? Being in a little Class B, an Airstream Interstate Sprinter van, we know all too well how quickly these can fill up. So we wanted to do an experiment, and I'll let Christine explain them. Yeah, so we have a general idea of how long our tanks last because on our weeks out of the camps, we do go dry camping every night. So we know how to preserve it, what works for us, what typically runs out first. But during that time out, we're using the gym to work out and we're using the gym to shower. So it's not really a true test of how long we could last in a real world experiment. So that's what we're gonna do here. The test has a few rules. Rule number one, the test is over when either our black tank fills, our gray tank fills, or our fresh water tank is empty. Rule number two, we are not going to use the sensors of our tanks because they can be a little inaccurate from time to time. Rule number one comes into effect when the gray tank is physically full and we see standing water in our kitchen sink or the black tank is getting uncomfortable to use the toilet anymore where we just don't think we can squeeze any more in. We're gonna press these tanks to the max. We're gonna push some limits here. Or if we run out of water in our fresh tank, that's the rule of how we know when we're at our max. Rule number three is we are going to log all of the usage for our water. So every time we take a shower, we're gonna track it. Every time we go number one or number two, we're gonna track it and every dish that I wash, we're gonna track that. A couple other notes on details is for number one, I never flush toilet paper. That always goes in the trash for number one. For showers, we're gonna do military style showers on and off to suds up and rinse, so we're talking like three minutes or less. I'm going to shampoo my hair, but I'm not going to condition it in the shower. I'm gonna do a leave-in conditioner after the shower. Okay, so the two different tests we're gonna do. One is going to be a extreme average use, which means- <laughs> Extreme average. We're gonna shower every single day. That's you. <laughs> we're gonna shower every day, and we're gonna use glassware for everything. We're not gonna use any paper products at all. Test number two, we're gonna stretch the limits a little bit further. We're not going to shower every day. We're gonna shower every two, maybe three days. It's gonna be when we feel dirty and like we need a shower, we're gonna shower. So I know we can stretch it out two, three days. We've done it oftentimes before. We will use paper plates. We will use paper bowls, but I'll still wash silverware because I'm not gonna be dumping plastic forks in the garbage. So that's kind of our outline for the two controlled tests. So. Tonight, before we go to bed, Aaron's gonna go outside, he's gonna dump the tanks, he's gonna fill up our fresh tank, disconnect us from the city water, and the test will start then. We're also interested in hearing your guys' tank capacities and how long they last you. So let us know in the comments down below what you guys have ran into and what kind of rig you got and what size tanks you got, because it's always fun to hear what everybody else has out there. All right, so that is a full 26 gallon freshwater tank. Our 27 gallon gray is empty. The black 15 gallons is empty. And we're ready to start this experiment. Let the games begin. All right, welcome back. It's been about a day and a half and we've been meticulously logging and tracking everything. It's we're, exhausting. It is. It's we're, a chore. We're not going to go over the full numbers until the very end, but I got to say it's pretty alarming and I think we might have a problem. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it's going very well. Like I said, it's a day and a half later. It's Sunday at about 1030 in the morning. We are switching campsites today, so we're going to have a little bit of a travel day. Hopefully we don't run into uh, filling up the tanks on the road. 
I'm actually relieved our trip today is short. It's an hour drive. We are going to stop and explore in Astoria. Yes. So once again, we're strictly using the bathroom inside the RV. We're not using the campground bathrooms at all. Um, we're logging our showers, our washing of our hands, our dishes, and the bathroom usage, and what we're drinking. It's too. starting to, it's really starting to tally up. It is. It, it is amazing how quickly it does tally once you start tracking once everything. Once you start tallying. Yeah. So on day number two, we still have lots of water usage to go. We still need to take our showers for the day, and we're going to need to eat many more meals. So we're going to keep tallying as we go, and we'll put everything together at the end. So stay tuned. Well, guys, test number one is officially over. It ended uh, late last night, which was Monday night. Um, so the first test only took a couple days to conclude. And I think you'll be very surprised by the findings. We actually were kind of surprised because it's a little different than how we normally do our tank setup. But we are now going to uh, start test number two. And like I said, stick around to the very end. We're going to go over all the numbers and kind of our thoughts on the findings and just talk about um, a little bit how the experiment went. But uh, the first test went pretty quick. So with each person and each household, it's going to change for use, you know, like depending on the amount that you drink water, depending on the amount that you go to the bathroom, depending on how much you cook, how much you cook in the van, how much you cook outside of the van, like using a grill or getting food to go, like all of those different variables are going to affect your own personal experience with the tank sizes. Um, so hopefully like our experience and we'll share with you what we're heavy on, like we definitely know what we're heavy on and what we're light on. So we'll be able to share with you like these, these are what our results are based on our lifestyle. Yeah. And test number one is not a typical way to boondock. It's, it's more just I think for new RVers that have no idea what tank sizes are going to last what, and most people come from a house to an RV and continue to kind of use water like they normally do. It definitely takes time to adjust your water usage. Like yeah. people that first come into an RV are going to be cranking on the water in ways <laughs> that make other people go like, eh, what are you doing over there? You know, like ease up on that water. <laughs> and even like, even once in a while to each other, we'll still be like, geez, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Keep it easy on the faucet. Yeah. So like, like Aaron said, like coming into this brand new, you're probably going to be a little bit more on this extreme average side and you're going to be heavy on the faucet and hopefully this experiment and you can compare test number one and test number two will show you like if you're really conservative and you just ease up in certain areas, it really makes a big difference on how you can preserve your tanks versus being like fully cush and fully just lax with water. It makes a big difference. Yep. So test number two, we are not going to shower every day. We are going to switch to using more paper products and we are going to try to stretch this out as in a more normal boondocking type of situation. Dry flushing with the toilet. Mm hmm. Yeah. That helps so much with the toilet. Yeah. So I imagine this test is going to take quite a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So it'll be fun to uh, to get the experiment going. It's kind of weird. We're at a campsite, but we're like dry docking almost. So. Yeah. Hopefully none of our neighbors think we're whack jobs. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah, they probably already do. All right, so test number two. Here we go. Here we go. All right, test number two is officially over. And for the sake of time, we're going to spare uh, all the video recording of that. And we're just going to get into the results of both Thank tests. God it's over because it's a pain to track every single thing that you do. Yeah, it took uh, just under a week to do both tests back to back, and uh, it got a little tiresome towards the end. You're just kind of sick of like tallying every time you wash your hands, brush your teeth, go to the bathroom, take a shower. It's exhausting. Yeah, but uh, it was fun to do, and I'm glad we did it. Yeah, it was fun. So let's go over test number one real quick. So it officially lasted about 50 hours, so just over two days. Um, that test ended when our fresh water tank ran out on the end of day number two. Um, we've never had our fresh water tank run out and I'll explain why. So when we 
uh, dry camp or boondock, it's usually in the cities and we're going to the gym every single day. So we're filling up our water, our drinking water at the gym every day. So the most we've boondocked out in the wild is like two days. Um, or not even two days, like yeah. just over a day. So um, we're not used to drinking our water out of the tank like that. And, and we drink a lot shower. of water. Yes. So it makes sense that it ran out, but at the same time, it was very surprising that it did. Yeah, we were expect we were totally expecting one of our gray tank or black tank to fill up. Yeah, we were not expecting the fresh water. So uh, for the uses on the black tank, uh, the grand total for number one that we did was 59 times. And you drink a lot, you pee a lot. <laughs> we're constantly peeing. As I started tallying that and looking at that, it's like, wow. So if you've never tallied how many times you go to the bathroom in a day, just try it and <laughs> see if it's as weird as we are. See if you're drinking enough water. Yeah. Um, so number two was four times, uh, as pretty regular, regular, twice a day, um, once a day, once a day per person, once a day times two people, four, uh, the gray tank, um, we took four showers. So we each took a shower every single day. Like we said, where we're gonna, and remember for me, that's just shampooing and body washing. I skipped the conditioner for outside of the shower and that really helps a lot with the rinsing. Yep. Uh, we brushed our teeth 10 times. We washed our hands 64 times. Um, onto the dishes, we did glasses 12 times. Plates and bowls 14 times. Tupperware was 9 times. Skillets uh, 8 times. And then the utensils was 30 times. We wash a lot of dishes. We eat a lot. That's why I expected we cook that a lot. gray water to, to fill up first. Yeah. And honestly, the dishes was the part where I was like, okay, this is starting to make me sick. How many dishes like I'm washing? Cause I feel like I'm washing dishes all the time. But then when you start like, yeah, it's like, uh, and then last was we filled our Brita pitcher, which is about a half a gallon, seven times total. Um, and just for the fun of it, I wanted to see how much gray water capacity we had left. Um, so I just ran it and measured it and filled it up. And there's about four gallons left in the gray tank. Um, our tank capacities are 26 gallons on the fresh, 27 gallons on the gray, and 15 gallons on the black. So that gives you a good idea. Airstream has, I would say, above average uh, tank sizes in the Class Bs. There are a lot of other vans that we looked at as small as the Heimer Active that has the cassette toilet at six gallons on the black. And the tank sizes was one of the drying factors that led you to choose the Airstream Interstate. Yep. And then the Winnebago's, uh, Eras, and Travados were a little bit smaller too at like 9 gallons and I think 12 and 13 gallons So the, on the black tank. So the 15 gallon black tank was, was pretty big for us. Um, and then on the black tank there was, it was almost full. It wasn't quite full, but it was very close to being full it probably had another half days use at most at most yeah i think we came up with like five more peas in it yeah yep so maybe even just you know another for us another hour <laughs> one more hour uh but um so that was test number one i'll let christine go over test number two's results and then we'll kind of quick talk about uh the comparison between the two all right, so test number two, we limited our showers. We weren't showering daily like we did in test number one. We really wanted to stretch it out. Remember, it's cold here. We weren't sweating our butts off, so we weren't disgusting. Um, we showered when we felt we needed a shower. Also, we went and we switched to paper plates and paper bowls. We tried to cut down on some of the dish washing. We still had a lot of dishes to wash because Tupperwares and stuff I'm always constantly using. And then the silverware, we washed that. We weren't throwing plasticware away. So um, other changes besides the showering and the dishes, we did dry flushing in the toilet for number one. So every time we flushed it, it was just dry. We didn't have extra water going in, filling the tank, and depleting our fresh water. I believe those are the three big differences for the tests, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, so that lasted 72 hours. We got an entire full day out of it, give or take a couple hours. Extra? 
Yes, beyond test number one. So we, when you switch those components up a little bit, we got quite a bit more. When you're talking two days to three days in a test, that's a huge percentage of a difference. So our numbers came in black tank uses. Number one, we had 70. And number two, we had six. And then with the gray tank uses, showers, we had two, just one per person. Teeth, we still brushed 12 times, twice a day per person. Hands, we washed 59 times. Glasses, 12. Plates and bowls, 4. Tupperware, 16. Utensils, 33. And skillets, 8. Also on this test, we did not fill our Brita pitcher from the tank. We used our carrying jugs and we filled up from a hose outside. And then the fresh tank uh, capacity after test number two was done was still well over half full. I did check um, mm. our sensor, which on the sensors, like I said, they're not always accurate, but the fresh tank stays the most accurate because it doesn't run into the um, deposits that uh, the gray and the black sensors get messed up on. So um, there was still plenty of room in our a gray and our fresh tank to to continue on the test so really our limiting factor there was was the black tank for sure yeah and that is what we expected because normally when we're out for a week at a time that is what fills up first but we can usually stretch our black tank out for six to seven days yeah we get out for a week because we go to the gym every day so we use the we gym use public restrooms and, when we're able to yeah i mean we still use our bathroom a lot but all, strictly for number one we you know try to use the gym for number two and um that just changes the game yeah. up quite a bit you can stretch it out little changes make a huge difference if you just tweak one use here one use there you can really just add multiple days on to your capacity yep so my thoughts and conclusions on these two tests are if you use your tanks like full capacity like you would in a house you could almost fill them up in a day. I know when we've done like cooking shows and you're washing dishes yeah. and we're showering, the gray tank has filled up in one day. So I try to uh, dump it once a day at the campsites when after we're done working out, I just uh, dump the gray tank and the black tank like every other day just to um, just to keep that so we don't have to worry about is the gray tank going to be full. Yeah, yeah. Dishes is the biggest thing for us. Yeah. I it's, really crank on, on the water when I'm washing dishes. Absolutely. So that's kind of, you know, my thoughts on that overall usage in a small class B, like it's going to last a day or two if you're going to try to use it full board. Now, if you want to stretch it out, which you could easily do if you bring on extra water, if you're out boondocking and you really go conservative on everything um, and you use the outside bathrooms or outside i mean you really have to stretch that out if you're going to use your bathroom full board it's only going to last a couple days three days kind of max there's just no way around it yeah so um to stretch it out for a week you're going to have to use outside sources of bathrooms and water that's just kind which of which is really easy to do yeah so bees aren't always the best for like full boondocking i want to spend you know a week or two out in the middle of nowhere. What's your thoughts? Same. I mean, really, you can really control your outcome based on a few different altered alterations to your habits. So just being cognizant of it, it's a really good test to put yourself through. Um, if you're at a campsite, do what we did and just unplug everything and pretend that you're dry camping and see what your weakness is. See where you run out first and then you'll know what you need to work on for improvement. I mean, the best way to improve is to find your weak spot first. Yeah, so I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you're in the market for a Class B and are interested in tank sizes, I always was very curious about the tank sizes, but I never really found a video that like straight up said, this is what you can or can yeah. expect. Um, so I'm glad we did it and mm -hmm. I think it was a fun test. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did leave a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week. See you next time. Thank you. That's it. We're ready to roll. Let the experiment begin. You're all like groggy sleeping. Yeah. So.
Oh, I think I'm ready to get my pajamas on. Let's make the bed and get cozy. I know it's eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get my sleep. All right, it's now later that day. <laughs> which, which day is it? <laughs> All the dishes are done. <laughs> the dishes are done. The dishes done, are man. done. <laughs> if the footage turns out pretty horrible, I just have to trust us that we're doing it. Did I mess up, Aaron? Almost. Does everybody record themselves dumping and filling? <laughs> Isn't that a normal thing to do? If you're a full-time RVer? The pressure here is a little weak, too. I feel like I'm walking a dog or something. <laughs> 